you can never have too many amateur radio antenna books. Here's my stack. We'll go through them a bit later on. If you see any one of these, either at a ham fest or cheaply available online, my advice is to buy it. Because different books, although they might cover the same topics, cover things in a slightly different angle. And there might be designs in one that are very similar to designs in another, but for some reason it might be more practical for you to build. The most well known of the lot is the ARRL Antenna Book. It's been issued for, I don't know, at least 40, 50, maybe more years, and it's a good general purpose antenna manual. You don't need to buy every edition, but if you see old ones at ham fests, and they're significantly older than what you've got, then I suggest buying it because there's different antenna fashions that come in and come out of various editions. Anyway, the book starts off with antenna fundamentals, the effects of ground, that's very important. The ground can be just as important as what's in the air when it comes to antenna performance. Then planning your antenna system, the nuts and bolts of building them. Then it goes on to loop antennas. Loops are in various sizes, they can be small or large. The magnetic loop antennas, if you've got very little room. Receiving loops. And uh, then it goes on to low frequency antennas that you'd use on say 80 and 160 meters. Um, you're often having to economize on space. Inverted L's, that's a very good general purpose choice. They can be made to operate on multiple bands. And then later on, a section on multi-band antennas and how you can make an antenna operate on different bands, like using traps. Then multi-element antennas, so you can get a bit of gain and directivity, phase verticals and the like. Matching networks, log periodics, you wouldn't consider those unless you had lots of space and lots of room for metal. But they are good for covering a wide frequency range. HF Yagis are the most common type of gain antenna on the higher HF bands and VHF. A lot of dimensions there that can help. Quads, if you've got lots of wire and can support a square or a triangle then a two element quad can work quite well. Long wire antennas. Uh, direction finding, um, some amplifiers and things to help you on receive. How you can get various radiation patterns. And portable antennas, something of particular interest to viewers of this channel. Mobile antennas, maritime mobile, repeaters, VHF, UHF antennas, it goes up to dishes for the microwave bands and beams. Then materials, what you build the antenna with, depends on whether you want the thing to last for 50 years or whether you just want something light and simple for portable. And holding the antenna up, a lot of stuff here on masks and other supports. And various modes of propagation, which your antenna's gotta be suited for. Uh, transmission lines, connectors, antenna couplers, and making measurements. So that's the ARRL Antenna Handbook. Um, definitely buy one of these if you see it available. Also from the ARRL, and this particular book is good if you want simple antennas. Um, they're basically articles from QST, other ARRL publications. Um, I think there are different editions of this, not just this one. So if you see ones with different covers, then the contents are likely quite different. Um, basically a compendium of different types of antennas, dipoles, loops, beams. Um, the antennas here are all, as the title suggests, wire antennas. 
If you want a simple weekend project, want to experiment with antennas, put it, put one up to see how it works and compare it with what you had before, then this book is one that I'd recommend. Um, not just this book, but all the other companion volumes. Um, there's not a lot of theory. This is all pretty much practical articles. Um, there's a loop here, V antennas, rhombics. It does help if you've got a fair bit of land for some of these experiments. But there is some things for portable antennas and antennas concealed in trees. So that's Wire Antenna Classics. Another ARRL book is Antennas and Techniques for Low Band DXing. This is an older edition. The newer ones will look a bit different to this. Um, this is really for 160, 80 and 40 meter DXs. It's written by a very experienced DXer, um, ON4UN. There's quite a bit of detail on propagation. A lot of DXs are seeking grey line propagation around sunrise and sunset, so you need to know where that is your part of the world and the other part of the world. And it has quite a lot of detail that you probably won't find in other books. Um, it is pitched at a fairly high level, so for the absolute beginner, maybe this book isn't as good as some of the others. But if you want to really get the best out of your amateur station on the lower HF bands, then this book is a classic. It also helps if you have a lot of land, as some of the antennas on here are quite large. And helps if you've got a big budget as well. But even so, even if you don't, even if you operate portable, there's a lot of good material in here that is worth reading. Um, it talks about receiving antennas. That's really important on the lower HF bands. Beverages. Dipole antennas. Basically, it needs to be a high dipole to work on DX. Uh, above half wavelength high. Vertical antennas, very commonly used for DXs. They have a low angle of radiation, but only if you've got a good ground. So there's a lot of attention given to radial systems, counterpoises and the like in this book. Um, looks like your, your inverted L. They're trying to feed the tower there to achieve that. Uh, loops. Vertical arrays. Again, here's a page showing the different direction characteristics you can get if you change the phasing between two elements in verticals. A lot of detail on that. Um, possibly this is the most comprehensive book ever written on that. Then other types of antennas. Um, directivity is quite important if you want to reduce interference and concentrate your signal. Yarkies and quads for the lower HF bands, they are monsters. An 80 metre Yagi. Um, I don't think too many people are going to be able to build those, but interesting to read about them. So yeah, that's um, Antennas and Techniques for Low Band DXing by ON4UN. From the RSGB is HF Antennas for All Locations by Les Moxon G6XN, a very well known antenna experimenter. And I really recommend this book if you want something for ideas if you want to think about antennas um, in a different light then I'd recommend this book a lot of ideas particularly if you don't have a lot of space and you want to um, experiment with compact antennas this book can tell you there's a section on gains and losses how you can minimize losses with small antennas you might have heard of the Moxon antenna that's like a variant of the VK2 ABQ. It's the Moxon is a rectangular antenna, a bit like a two element Yagi, but with the elements bent in, so they almost touch each other. And that makes the antenna quite a bit smaller than the normal sized Yagi. 
but it still gives it a reasonable amount of gain and directivity. It talks about critical coupling. It is a little bit finicky. It's a bit more finicky than a straight to element Yagi. But if you don't have much space, then a Moxon is worth experimenting with. Um, talks about later on feeding the antenna. Moxon's a big fan of open wire feed line, um, antenna couplers, rather than coax cable. And also in getting a lot of gain from a very small expenditure. For instance, if you had a two element quad, instead of using really heavy hardware you just make it as light as possible maybe even conceal it in a tree instead of having a rotator you might just switch the elements so you can get forward and reverse direction just by switching two feed lines so he talks all about that in his book close spaced beams again good if you want to save space quite a bit of detail in that not too many photos in this book, but there are a lot of diagrams. Multi-band antennas. There's a lot in here about getting multiple bands from a beam antenna without using traps. Then receiving antennas, a bit of detail on that. And the antenna and its environment. That's useful to read if you go QRP portable. He talks about the ground sloping towards your desired direction that can improve your results. Single element antennas, quite cheap and simple to build. Horizontal beams. I think Moxon also talks a lot about vertical beams, less used than horizontal beams, but you can make them out of wire and switch around the directions. So they can be quite economical, especially now you can get squid poles and fishing poles and use that as the center support. Invisible antennas, so you can conceal an antenna maybe in your roof or somewhere else and still be able to get on air. Finally, mobile portable antennas and a few other bits and pieces about uh, how you know your antenna is working and test equipment. So that's HF antennas for all locations by Les Moxon G6XN. Again, I highly recommend this book for the antenna experimenter. More practically oriented is International Antennas. Basically a cookbook of how to build it. Antenna projects from around the world. Rotatable dipole. In feds. These are fairly simple antennas. Again, they might be afternoon, weekend projects. And they're quite low budget. But this is a good practical manual that doesn't go too heavily into the theory side. Here in Australia, we used to have a magazine called Amateur Radio Action, and they published a series of antenna books, mainly extracts from some of their magazine articles. Some interesting articles from all around the world. This is on the birdcage, G4ZU. Antenna mods and repairs. some theory stuff good article here about your ideal antenna you're very unlikely to find this book outside Australia if you can find it for a dollar or even five dollars then again you should buy it these two books are by Doc VK5BUG they came out a couple of years ago Cellar Dwellers on the Go and MF Down Under both concentrate on low frequency antennas and techniques for bands like 630 meters, 160 meters, etc. I won't go through these books as you're very unlikely to find them outside Australia, but if you were to find them then definitely pick them up. They have a lot of articles, uh, they, they, they are big books, mainly because the writing in them is so large and there's a lot of photos and diagrams. So look out for these and snap them up if you can. Leaving it to last is my own book, Hand Carried QRP Antennas. You can get it in electronic form or as a paperback. It concentrates on low power QRP portable antennas. It starts off with your simple dipoles 
and talks about NFEDs, verticals, single element loop antennas, magnetic loops, and small beams I use on VHF. I talk about materials for antennas and supporting the antenna. It's favorably reviewed. You can jump onto Amazon and search the title Hand Carried QRP Antennas and read all the reviews about it. It doesn't go into the theory very much, but if you want something practical for simple antennas, especially for QRP portable, then this antenna book is worth considering.